for joining us on this Election Day Tuesday. I'm Beth Farnsworth. And I'm C.J. Ward. We have more live team coverage of tonight's election. News Channel 3's Tracy Lair is live in Arroyo Grande with what's happening there. John Palminteri is in Santa Barbara, where many Democrats will be gathering tonight. And Elise Martinez is live in Santa Barbara at the campaign party of another Democrat, Helene Schneider. We begin, though, with Tracy Lair covering 24th Congressional District candidate Kachua Sajjan, who spent the day getting his message out on social media. Tracy. He likes to say online that you can keep up with Cacho, and that's what we're trying to do in Arroyo Grande. This is his hometown. It's the kind of place you'll see these signs in yards right across from polling places. We're right across from the Cavalry Chapel polling place, and it's been pretty busy here. Now, he is taken to Twitter and Facebook for much of the day today. He calls voting a celebration, and he's one of three Republicans in the race for the 24th District. He's been saying things online like unfair trade deals or something he wants to combat, and he says no budget, no pay for Congress. He also says he doesn't just let talk the talk, he has walked it too as a former supervisor and an assemblyman. And he also shared a fortune cookie that his son gave him and it said that his efforts would pay off and he's hoping for that to happen tonight. He's going to be thanking his supporters tonight at an event in Arroyo Grande and we hope to keep, catch up with Cacho there. Also, he hopes to be one of the top two vote getters to get him on the ballot in November and that's the big race today. Again, the polls are open. It's pretty busy here in Arroyo Grande and we'll have more coverage for you tonight on News Channel 3 at 630. Reporting live in Rio Grande, Tracy Lair, News Channel 3. Okay, thank you, Tracy. And Justin Fareed will host a gathering in Santa Barbara tonight. He and his campaign took advantage of every second today, visiting polls and knocking on doors, trying to sway last-minute voters. Now his campaign is preparing for tonight's event at Endless Summer Bar and Cafe. News Channel 3's Vicki Nguyen joins us live from the venue. Vicki. Beth and CJ, if you can take a look around here, they're putting up posters, blowing up balloons until their faces turn red. Uh, they're preparing for tonight's venue, and they're expecting a lot of people to show up tonight. And as you can take a look over here, uh, the, the supporters of Justin Freed will be getting a front row view of Santa Barbara's Harbor. And just before now, we did catch up with Justin Fareed uh, when he stopped by several polling places, including the Holy Spirit Church on the Mesa. His campaign stood in front of the entrance of the parking lot, hoping to get last-minute voters. Fareed says he doesn't have any regrets about his campaign. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what the numbers look like this evening. It's been an unbelievable campaign grassroots all over the central coast getting the backing of the diversity of our community I'm I'm humbled I'm excited to see what uh, the next uh, few few days are going to look like he is hopeful of tonight's results, and though his event begins around 7 p.m., Fareed says he won't arrive until 8.30 to mingle with every one of his supporters here. And follow KYT.com and stay tuned to our channel because we're going to have results of all of the candidates tonight, including Justin Fareed. Live in Santa Barbara, Vicki Nguyen, News Channel 3. Okay, thank you, Vicki. And Santa Barbara Mayor Helene Schneider also wants to represent the 24th Congressional District. News Channel 3's Elise Martinez joins us live from Santa Barbara with that part of the story. Elise. Beth CJ, I'm at Potec Winery where Mayor Helene Schneider and her supporters will watch those election results roll in tonight. Now she's joining me live and you've had a very busy day with a last minute push for voters. Where did you just get back from? Uh, we just came back from Cal Poly. We were talking with students who were, some had already voted, some are voting, some were studying, but we wanted to push to get out the vote as much as we could. And what do you think of your chances? Two people will move on to the November general elections. How are you feeling tonight? You know, we're feeling really good. Uh, it's great when you go to areas that you're not as familiar, like in San Luis Obispo County, and people look at you before you say anything, saying, I saw your, your campaign, I voted for you, good luck, and uh, we're seeing that all over. So I think it's a really competitive race. Uh, people should go vote. you got two hours left. So, uh, you know, it, I, we're feeling great. And talk about some of your major campaign promises that you've made. What do you plan to do if you get elected? 
Well, I want to bring the perspective of being mayor of local government, coupled with my experience working at Planned Parenthood as their human resources director, to get fight through the gridlock in Washington, D.C., to fight for what people here in the 24th Congressional District really care about, uh, whether it's reducing student loan debt or, or environmental protections or civil rights and equal pay for women. These are things that um, drive me and have for the last two decades, and I'd like to bring that perspective to D.C. All right. Well, best of luck to you, Thank and you. we'll be here all night as those elections results roll in and as we've mentioned this is a very close race there's no clear front runner right now so for now we're gonna send it back to you hey thank you Elise and one of the other nine candidates in the 24th congressional district race has more than a decade of service as an elected official salute Carbajal is now looking to the highest office in his political career News Channel 3 senior reporter John Palminteri joins us live John Carbajal comes with a major endorsement he has the backing of Congresswoman Lois Capps, and he is now at this hour back in one of her strongholds. He's working on a get out the vote rally and going door to door, street by street in Isla Vista, where the Capps family has for years been very strong on the campaign trail. Salute Carball is the current first district county supervisor. He's held the job for 12 years. Prior to that, he was an aide to Naomi Schwartz, who is also the first district supervisor. He's wrestled with big economic issues since he took over that position. He talked about that when he was at our congressional de debate just a few weeks ago at the station, and he talked about the economy and how he had to deal with economic issues when times were tough in Santa Barbara County around 2008 when they had to cut positions, freeze positions, and also cut back on services. Now with the economy coming back, they're working on some big money items, including fixing the broken infrastructure and roads, and also trying to put all the pieces together on a very complicated North County jail project that's gonna have a price tag estimated to be at $100 million. He hopes to take this experience to Washington, D.C. He's been there before for the inauguration of President Obama and to meet with other leaders in that area representing Santa Barbara County. One of the t things he's been doing during this campaign is to go to the north end of the district in San Luis Obispo County, where he needs to get his message out and have more name recognition. He's been working very hard there. Tonight, though, at this hour, he is on the streets of Isla Vista, working that stronghold, about 20,000 residents just in that community, many under 25 years old. That's the third largest voter registration block in Santa Barbara County for this election. We'll have a live interview with him coming up tonight. Reporting live in Santa Barbara, I'm John Palmentary, KYT News Channel 3. A pleasant day up and down the coast to get out and vote. Chief Meteorologist Alan Rose is in our First Alert Weather Center. Alan, the only hiccup is some wind in some areas, right? Yeah, CJ, it could get a little bit windy later on, but I think most of the wind is going to pick up for us after the polls close in Santa Barbara. And tonight it's cooling down nicely. We went from 70 at the 5 o'clock hour down to 65 degrees now at the 6 o'clock hour. Still some 70s, 80s, and even some 90s in the valley, so you get that big spread out there this time of the year with the microclimates really pronounced quite a bit. Now, winds have been gusty at times across the central coast. Later tonight, we'll watch for a few areas. I think west of Goleta in the foothills, near the Las Flores Canyon, the winds will pick up. You can see on Futurecast and out in the Ventura and L.A. County Mountains. In fact, that part of Southern California under a wind advisory from now until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Again, that includes the Ventura County Mountains and the L.A. County Mountains. Strongest winds are going to be across Highway 33 and the I-5 corridor where winds could gust as high as 50 miles an hour. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Still some heat to go in the valleys tomorrow, then everyone is cooling down. I'll have the details in just a few. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Alan. Hillary Clinton reached the magic number of delegates before any votes were cast in the six states today. Clinton, with the backing of Democratic Party superdelegates, became the first woman to clinch the nomination of a major political party in American history. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is mired in controversy. More Republican elected officials are condemning the GOP's presumptive nominee for claiming that Judge Gonzalo Curiel, an American citizen born in Indiana, is biased against him because the judge's parents are from Mexico. Claiming a person can't do the job because of their race is sort of like the textbook definition of a racist comment. I think that should be absolutely disavowed. It's absolutely unacceptable. 
But Speaker Ryan went on to say he still backs Trump over Hillary Clinton. Another Trump supporter, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, says despite those controversial comments, he doesn't believe Trump is a racist. And back here at home, there are more than 850,000 people in Ventura County, but only 413,000 are registered to vote in this election. And News Channel 3's Kelsey Gerkins joins us live from Ventura tonight. And Kelsey, you have more about the voter turnout there so far. Yeah. Beth and CJ, voter turnout is pretty light in Ventura County. So far, most of the polling places throughout Ventura County are only seeing one, maybe two, and sometimes no one in their polling place at a time. But that's probably all because of vote by mail ballots. I just talked to election officials, and they tell me about half of the registered voters in Ventura County got a vote by mail ballot. Ventura County election officials are not releasing polling numbers yet, but said vote by mail numbers currently appear to be higher than 2012 totals. This year's primary only had a few items Ventura County residents had to vote for. The most talked about elections in Ventura County this election cycle are the seat for United States representative in the 26th district with Republican Rafael Diagnes running against incumbent Democrat Julia Brownlee. And of course, Ventura County voters pick for president. For this primary, two candidates stumped for votes in Ventura County. Hillary Clinton putting on a rally last week in Oxnard and Bernie Sanders putting on a rally the week before in Ventura. More than 10,000 Ventura County residents got to hear one of the Democratic candidates speak firsthand. I did see Bernie Sanders. Um, that is very interesting because, um, I mean, that means that they see how important it is that our uh, county votes. I mean, they see the importance of this county. And uh, so it didn't change my vote. Um, but, I, you know, I went to go see what it was about. It's a historical event, you could say. You still have time to go out and vote. Polling places will close at 8 tonight. And if you have one of those mail-in ballots, make sure to turn it in. It could have been postmarked today, and as long as they receive it by Friday, it's still going to count. If you want to turn it in by hand because the post office is already closed in your area, you can drop it off at one of these mail ballot drop-off boxes or turn it into any polling place in the area. Reporting live in Ventura this election night, Kelsey Gerkins, News Channel 3. Okay, thanks so much, Kelsey. And this just in, we're learning that Hillary Clinton is the Democratic presidential nominee presumptive in New Jersey. And Trump wins South Dakota. Okay, coming up next on News Channel 3 at 6, Rio de Janeiro beaches are going high tech with a new seaside app just in time for the Olympics. And Alan has your first alert forecast coming up after the break. Live, Beth Farnsworth, CJ Ward, and Chief Meteorologist Alan Rose. This is KEYT News Channel 3, where the news comes first. One of the most heated political seasons, from important local and state races to the presidency. Now, it's time to use your voice. After you vote, stay with the combined resources of the largest news team on local television for comprehensive coverage of the returns. Live team coverage throughout the night on News Channel 3.